We give you the latest COVID numbers, and if you're watching the case numbers, you're thinking, when will we see the drop off? That's right. That's what we're waiting for. Infectious disease specialist Dr. Ruth Berggren with UT Health San Antonio joins us now to answer your questions. So, Dr. Berggren, you know, we're all hoping to see cases drop off. We know that today the county reported 1,745 new cases, five more people died. Overall, how are we doing? We are beginning to see the decline that we were looking for, but that doesn't mean we've come all the way down. So we have a community lab test positivity rate of about 32.9%. It's down 6% or so from last week, and that's really the right trend. It's what we've been waiting for, what we're watching for, but we're still at very high rates. We want to get down below 5%, and we're gonna. it's going to take weeks to get there. You know, we've been talking a lot about just how much more you're protected if you get the vaccine and you get the booster shots than you are if you're not. And there's been a lot of different studies out there. As a matter of fact, I know that you were paying attention to what they released from the White House today on uh, vaccinated versus non-vaccinated people. Yeah, that's quite striking. So thank you for bringing that up. And if you are fully vaccinated and boosted, you are 97 times less likely to die. Did you get that? 97 times less likely to die from COVID than an unvaccinated person. And if you're vaccinated but haven't gotten your booster yet, you're still significantly protected. You're 14 times less likely to die from COVID than an unvaccinated person. So it's really important to go ahead, finish your vaccine series and get the booster. Absolutely. I just want to go back to the numbers that we were talking about before. You know, a lot of testing centers today had to close because of the weather. Uh, and this is something that obviously we watch out for every single day. Should we prepare ourselves for what, what may seem like a surge only because people weren't able to get tested for a few days? Well, yes. Yeah, so day to day variations um, could be affected by things like inclement weather. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we've seen, you know, a few days where it looks like things were really low and then they, they zoom back up. But that'll even out over time. And, you know, we, we have been expecting that the numbers would peak out around the end of January and we'd start to see a decline. And, and I really think we are starting to see a, a leveling off. Doctor, as far as treatments are concerned, San Antonians will now have access to outpatient antiviral pills if they get infected with COVID. What are those? What are the side effects? What do you need to do to get them? So this is really important because the, there's two medicines. They're called Paxlovid. The other one's called Molnupiravir, and they have been emergency use authorized for use by the FDA, and they have finally been distributed and they're available in a limited number of pharmacies. What people need to know is if they have COVID and they are symptomatic, if it's been less than five days, they should talk to their primary care provider, their doctor, their nurse practitioner, their PA, because they may be able to get a prescription for one of those pills. And uh, you have to take them twice daily for five days. Um, they're not necessarily all that much fun to take, but they're a whole lot more fun than COVID. And what we're hearing is that people who can get on the antiviral medication are starting to see a turnaround in their symptoms within about 48 hours. I, I myself am accumulating experience uh, using Paxlovid in particular. And what I'm struck by is how few people in San Antonio seem to be aware that the pills are out there, they can be prescribed, and you need to let somebody know when you have COVID with symptoms, you need to let them know sooner rather than later. Because if five days have gone by and you've been symptomatic more than five days, the pills aren't gonna help you so much. What's the threshold when it comes to pain or, or, or um, you know, any kind of side effects that you, that you might have as a result of COVID where you say, okay, I think that I need, I need to get those, uh, that medication from my doctor? At the end of the day, it's a decision between you and your doctor and um, which medicine you, you get is going to depend on what other kinds of pills you take because Paxlovid can interact with a lot of other medications. Mm -hmm. um, and then Molnupiravir is not recommended for women of childbearing age. And so there's considerations like that. If you are older than 65, if you have any of the conditions that put you at high risk for a bad outcome, like being overweight, like having high blood pressure, heart, lung conditions, diabetes, 
those people for sure, if they've got symptoms, even if they're mild symptoms, they should speak to a primary care provider about getting a treatment. And well, in a get- moment, the pills may be more readily available than the monoclonals. We've been getting a lot of questions about antigen versus the PCR test and whether you, the antigen is better because you, you have it in your house and you're not going to have to wait, you know, what might be end up being five days anyway to get it. Do you agree with that? So I want to say both and about the utility of these tests. They're both valuable. And antigen tests are more likely to give you a false negative than a PCR test. But if you have a positive antigen test, you can believe it. And you don't have to go and get a PCR test to confirm that. Great. All right. Dr. Ruth Bergren with UT Health San Antonio, thank you so much for joining us today. Most welcome. Have a good evening. You too. We'll be right back.